ready to make something creative and cute? Well, we've got more stuff with this flower bead bracelet or candy bead flower cuff. Another well-known bead bracelet design that looks great, resembles a chain of flowers and simple to make. A bracelet you'll want to show off and never hide, inspired from the flowers from outside. So prepare for a tutorial that will fulfill your creative needs. Feel free to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Beads. <laughs> Here's a list of everything you need to make the flower cuff bead bracelet. To make the bead flower cuff, the first thing you're going to need to do is to take 4 feet of string and add 30 beads to that string in sections of 3. As you can see, I'm using different colors for each section to differentiate each flower. As I've said before, each section of beads will be used to form a flower, so just imagine that these will be flowers. Using the same pattern, we should have a total of 10 flowers when finished. Let's go ahead and use the same pattern and add the 15 remaining beads to the string. Once you have all 30 beads on that string in groups of three, you'll run those beads toward one end of the string and tie both ends of the string together with a square knot, bringing all the beads together, creating a simple single bracelet giving us one short end of string and one long end of string to use for building around the bracelet to create flower shapes. Be sure that your knots are tied nice and tight, ensuring that everything stays together. Once your knots are all tied and secure, then we are ready to start creating the centers of the flower. But first, we will need to take the long end of the string and run that string to the next bead adjacent to that knot, which is this white bead. Watch closely as I guide the string to this bead that will set us up for the next steps. Now that the string is coming out of the first bead of this group of three, we are ready to add one yellow bead to the string. As you can see, I've added the first yellow bead to the string, which will end up being the center of the flower. With the yellow bead added to the string coming out of the first bead of the section, you'll run that string to the last bead in that group of three, skipping the middle bead. Once you get that string all the way through that bead, you'll pull the string tight until the bead fits right in place. This is what it should look like so far. Now that we have the string coming out of this bead, which is the end of the section, we will move on to the next section or flower by using that same end of string and running it through the next bead, which is the red bead in the first bead of the section. Again, just watch closely as I guide the string to this bead pulling the string all the way through, setting us up once again for creating another center of the flower. Just like we did before, using that same end of string, we'll add one yellow bead to the string. With that bead on the string, we're going to run that string through the last bead in that group of three, which is the red bead on the end, guiding that string through, pulling the string tight, and the bead will fit right into place. As you can see, the yellow bead's all in place and the string is coming out of the red bead at the end of the section. Using that same end of string, we will run that string to the next bead, which is the first bead of this new section. With the string all the way through the first pink bead of this group, or section of beads, we can once again add one yellow bead to the string for the center of the flower. With the yellow bead on the string, we're going to run that string to the last pink bead of the section, of course skipping the middle bead, pulling the string all the way through until the yellow bead fits right in place. As you can see, the yellow bead is all set and the string is coming out of the last pink bead of that section. Let's take the string and run it through the next bead, which is the first purple bead of that group of three. With the string coming out of the first purple bead of this group, we are ready to add another yellow bead to the center of the flower. With the yellow bead added to the string, we'll run that string to the last purple bead of that section, pulling the string all the way through and the yellow bead will fit right into place. As you can see, I ran the string through the last bead of one section through the first bead of the next section, automatically setting us up for the next yellow bead for the blue flower. With the yellow bead on the string, go ahead and run the string through the blue bead on the end of this group of three, pulling the string all the way through so that the yellow bead or the center of the flower will fit right into place. 
From this point, you should be able to understand how to create the center points of the flowers with these repetitive steps, running the string to the first bead of the new section, adding one yellow bead to the string, and running that string to the last bead of that section, pulling the string all the way through, and the yellow bead will fit right into place. So just continue repeating these steps until you've gone all the way around the bracelet. As you can see with this quick visual reference, this part should become pretty simple and repetitive. Remember, after adding one bead to the string, you can run the string through both the last bead of one section and the first bead of the next section. With a bit of practice, this technique may also save you some time. Once you have made it all the way around the bracelet and have finished the center of all the flowers, this is what it should look like. With the center of the flowers complete, we are almost ready to create the petals of the flowers. In order to create the petals of the flowers, we need to use that same end of string and run that string through the two beads, leaving the string coming out of the yellow bead. Watch closely as I guide the string through these two beads that will set us up for the next steps in creating the additional petals for these flowers. This will also step us up the next row as you can see here. Now that we have the string going through the yellow bead, we will add two beads to the string inside of the section that match the previous color pattern and run that string to the next yellow bead. Since the first flower is white, I'm adding one white bead to the string, and the second flower is red, I'll be adding one red bead. With both of these beads on the string, we're going to run that string to the next yellow bead in that row. Once you get that string through that bead and pull the string all the way through, the two beads should fit right into place, corresponding with the other colors and filling in the gaps in between. This is what it should look like. With the string coming out of this yellow bead, we're ready to fill in the gap with the next two beads to the string by adding one red bead and one pink bead. With those beads on the string, we're running that string to the next yellow bead, pulling the string all the way through until the beads fit right into place. As you can see, the string is coming out of this yellow bead. As we did before, we will add two beads to the string. This section we will have one pink bead and one purple bead. With these two beads on the string, we're going to run that string to the next yellow bead, pull the string all the way through until the two beads fit right into place. When pulling the string to the yellow beads, be sure to pull the string nice and tight, hold the beads in place, and keep them in a solid formation. Once again, with the string coming out of the yellow bead, let's once again add two beads to this string. This section will have one purple and one blue bead. With the two beads added to the string, run that string to the next yellow bead, pull the string all the way through, and the beads will fit right into place. With the string coming out of this yellow bead, like we did before, adding two beads to the string, one blue bead and one white bead. Once those beads are on the string, Run that string to the next yellow bead, pull the string all the way through, and of course, the beads will fit right into place. As you can see, we're back at it again for the next section. With the string coming out of the yellow bead, we'll add the two corresponding beads to the string. As you can see, is the white and red. With the two beads on the string, run that string to the next yellow bead, and yes, again, they will fit right into place. Again, as you see the string coming out of the yellow bead, let's add one red bead and one pink bead to the string. Run that string to the next yellow bead, pull the string all the way through, and those two bead petals will fit right into place. Just like this, the string coming out of the yellow bead, you should know what two beads to add to the string. One pink bead and one purple bead. Once again, run that string to the next yellow bead, pull the string all the way through, and the beads will fit right into place, filling in that section. Be sure to keep the beads in a tight and solid formation. Let's go ahead and fill in the next section with the string coming out of the yellow bead. Let's add a purple and blue bead to the string. Run that string to the next yellow bead, pulling the string all the way through until those two bead flower petals are where they should be. With our string coming out of this yellow bead, let's once again fill in the next section with these two beads. One blue bead and one white bead. With those beads added to the string, we're going to run that string to the next yellow bead, pull that string all the way through, and those beads will fit right into place. Be sure that your beads are in a solid formation. From this point, the string should be coming out of this yellow bead. To create the top petal of the flowers, we need to run the string through these two adjacent beads with the string coming out of the red bead. Watch closely as I guide the string to these two beads that will set us up for the final parts of these flowers. Remember, once you get that string to those two beads, 
be sure to pull the string all the way through to ensure that you still have enough string to use. Now that we have the string coming out of this red bead, we're ready to add the final petals to the flower by adding one bead to the string for each section, filling in the gaps and completing the shape of the flower. As you can see, I've added one red bead to the string. Next, you'll run that string to the next two beads here at the top. Watch closely as I guide the string through these two beads. Once you get that string through those beads and pull the string all the way through, the red bead will fit right into place, completing the shape of a flower, as you see here. This is what it should look like. With the first flower finished, it's time to move on to the next. With the string coming out of the pink bead, we'll add a bead and run the string to these next two beads. With the pink bead added to the string, watch closely as I guide the string through these two beads. Once you get that string through those beads, be sure to pull the string all the way through and that pink bead will fit right into place, again, creating another flower shape. As we can see the string coming out of this purple bead, let's go ahead and add another purple bead to the string and run that string to the next two beads as seen here. Once you get that string through those beads, pull the string all the way through to complete another flower, just like this. Remember to be sure to keep your beads in a tight formation to ensure that your flowers look nice and neat. Now that the string is coming out of the blue bead, we are ready to complete another flower. Let's go ahead and show you the steps once again to ensure you understand. With the string all set, add a bead to the string. With the bead on that string, run that string through the next two beads, pulling the string all the way through until the beads fit right into place to make the shape of a flower. So just keep repeating these steps and continue adding a bead in between each gap until you've gone all the way around the bracelet. As you can see with this visual reference and the stage of the bracelet, everything should be coming together pretty nicely with these different colors of beads used to diversify the flowers to give it the perfect look. And as always, you are always free to use the colors of your choice. Leave a comment below and let me know what colors and combinations you come up with. As a side note, you should know that everyone's wrist sizes may be different, so be sure to adjust accordingly, as you may need more or less beads depending on the size of the wrist. So take it from me and remember that every flower will start out in bead groups of three. Once you've reached the last flower and the string is all set for the final bead, with the white bead on the string, we will run that string through the only one white bead. Watch closely as I guide the string through this bead. When you get that string through that bead, be sure to pull that string all the way through and the bead will fit right into place. From this point, with the string coming out of the white bead on top, we will take that same string and run it through the bead below it, through the yellow bead in the middle, out of the side, through this bead on top. Again, watch closely as I guide the string through these beads, giving you a visual reference of where to run the string and what path to take, making it easier for you to see and understand. Once you have the string through the final bead, this is what it should look like. You should have each end of string through the side of this white flower. Next, you will tie each end of string together with a square knot to keep everything locked in place. Be sure that your knot is tied nice and tight and secure to ensure that everything stays together. After your knot is all tied, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your bead flower cuff is now complete. And there you have it, another fine classic design that was easy to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you'd like to add, requests or suggestions, don't be afraid to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one and fulfill your creative needs. Until next time, wear it and share it. Thanks for watching Turbo Beads.